And if we cannot end now our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. This quote from John F. Kennedy, former President of the United States, employs us to secure diversity. But what is diversity? The central theme of diversity is difference and inclusion. Diversity is often conflated with diverse groups which have special recognition under various legislative provisions around the globe. Most Western jurisdictions have provisions that protect some diverse groups, either through employment, discrimination, affirmative action, equal opportunity or other similar pieces of legislation. In this sense, Diversity can be defined across a spectrum of individuals from different age groups, sexual orientations, physical and mental disabilities, race, gender, religion, appearance, weight, political affiliation, socioeconomic background and nationality. However, difference can also incorporate professional background, education, organisational tenure, cognitive patterns, functional background and even leadership style. What makes matters difficult for organisations is that there is no agreement across jurisdictions, nor between academics, regarding either the differences that should be taken into account or the kinds of inclusionary practices that should be enacted to facilitate diversity. Nonetheless, Stone suggests that there are a number of ways in which we can think about diversity. Diversity can be categorised in three dimensions. Demographic diversity, such as gender, ethnicity and age. Psychosocial diversity, such as values, belief and knowledge and organisational diversity, such as organisational tenure and hierarchical level. Stone also notes that types of diversity can be differentiated using observable attributes, such as ethnic background, age and gender, and non-observable attributes, such as education, technical ability, functional background and personal values. Additionally, functional characteristics can be used, such as knowledge, skills and organisational experiences. Writers such as Prasad, Pringle and Conrad make the further point that we must be careful when incorporating every category under the banner of diversity for two reasons. Firstly, that ultimately we are all different and taken to the extreme there are over 6 billion diverse groups comprising 6 billion individuals. And secondly, there may be a tendency to treat all diverse groups as meriting the same attention, which fails to recognise that some differences are more likely to present more severe disadvantage in the workplace than others. In terms of inclusion, Leinen and Conrad suggest that more meaningful understandings of diversity should focus upon groups which systematically face discrimination and oppression at work. If our focus is upon the creation of equity in the workplace, we need an understanding of diversity predicated upon gaps in opportunities dependent upon diversity categories, or cross-sections of diversity, such as non-white women or non-white disabled men, Prasad and her colleagues also note that certain kinds of differences are likely to be more or less salient in some countries or organisational contexts, and in certain moments than in different times and places. For example, diversity can also be considered from the point of view of what has been described as productive diversity. Stone notes that when diversity is managed well, there are several organisational benefits that can accrue. Some of the benefits of diversity management are Improved organisational performance through higher productivity, increased knowledge and pool of information. Marketplace advantages through better understanding of different market segments that may have different perspectives. Creativity and innovation. Individual differences provide an opportunity for organisations to harness a broader range of ideas and ways of thinking. Better quality problem solving. Diversity in organisational decision making leads to superior decisions and solutions because there is a greater variety of backgrounds, experiences, knowledge, values, beliefs, attitudes and world views in a diverse group. Unfortunately, diversity is a two-edged sword and if it is not managed well, it can also undermine organisational effectiveness. The greater the differences between groups and individuals, the more likely conflict will erupt over perceived or real differences in values. This kind of conflict is rarely productive and is often driven by stereotypes and prejudice. Stereotypes are broad-based generalisations made about a group that are then applied to an individual of that group and without reference to their individual abilities and behaviours. Prejudice refers to people's attitudes towards members of groups that are based upon faulty, incorrect or invalid assumptions. Discrimination occurs when stereotypes or prejudice produce unfair treatment of an individual that disadvantages them. 
Therefore, diversity management requires that leaders act to reduce stereotypes, prejudice and discrimination that act to produce unproductive personal conflict. However, as effective leaders, we want diversity of thought, ideas, experience and knowledge to produce constructive or task-based conflict, because the more frames from which we consider a problem, the better will be the resulting decision. There is widespread academic support for the benefits which can accrue from diversity. However, we must focus upon the conditions which produce those positive results, since as Prasad and others note, many problems need to be addressed and resolved in implementing meaningful diversity policies and practices before these benefits can accrue.